So this is a brief rundown of how you can extend selectors and create custom app rules for use with JavaScript inside CSS. So suppose that we wanted to extend a selector with some custom feature that didn't exist, uh, like a pseudo class, but we would need it to be powered by JavaScript. Or let's say we wanted to include a style sheet that was powered by some custom app rule that didn't exist, but we could do with JavaScript. A way that you could express this in CSS if this is the selector and this is the rule, which contains the declaration list of properties and values, the place that we can extend a selector is between the selector list that CSS recognizes and the rule. And we can, instead of creating some custom, if we were to actually put this in as custom, it would be ignored by the browser or by a CSS parser because that's not valid. But if we use an attribute selector, we can create something that is parsed as valid CSS that can then be read from uh, the CSS that the browser knows about or done server side. So if we start our attribute with a double dash, which will never happen in HTML, um, it's not valid there, um, we can add anything we want in here. So if I said custom, and then over here, we were going to say um, feature. All of a sudden, this is something that is valid CSS, but it's never going to match anything in our HTML document. And it's something that we can read. We can ignore this part. We can kind of parse this to be written. Well, maybe. We can parse it to be written like this. And then if there is a function in our JavaScript called custom, we can run this code with these three arguments and have it power the rule, apply these declarations to the HTML element when our whatever that feature is supported. And we've done that right from CSS. So how would we create a custom at rule? If we did something like this, it would be dropped immediately instead of parsed as CSS. So what we're able to do is make use of the at supports rule. There are a number of things that are officially supported, but there's also this general enclosed, which basically means if you have something here, This will be parsed and read as valid CSS. The browser will know what it is, but because whatever we put in here is something that the browser doesn't explicitly have support for, it's never going to apply the held rules to the page. So again, if we do something custom here, we can parse this whole thing into custom Yeah, one argument there, and we've got that here. So if we were to run this again, now this function is going to be different than this, the custom function that runs this, just because this is actually processing a style sheet instead of a rule. Um, but we're able to make use of JavaScript functions from CSS that contain entire style sheets, not just declaration lists. So uh, an example of that is I already have this JS and CSS plugin, which I use for event-driven virtual style sheet templating. And there's already a large number of plugins here uh, that are ready to go that are compatible with this. So if I can find some way to uh, parse out either from a rule or a custom at rule, uh, the function calls that I would need to drive these plugins, all of a sudden I can make use of any of these plugins from valid CSS. There's also the CSS polyfill patterns, which allows you to define new ones, uh, just a few lines of code. So a has selector requires that, um, plus the custom pseudo class, class in JavaScript. A fun one I just added was targeting things by their computed style property value. So you could target an element that already had a rule applied. Um, but some of these are pretty simple. If you just want an element query, 
uh, like max characters, you're comparing either the value or text content length or uh, somewhere here I have uh, overflowed in different directions. So as an example, this JS and CSS element query, you could use it from CSS if you could parse a call to this function. So normally from JS and CSS, you're including a JavaScript function call like this. So here I've got the same thing. We have um, written as selectors, as well as written as custom at rules that contain a style sheet. And then this can be parsed into the function call, and this supplied as the extra argument, and run with the existing plugin and JS and CSS. So an example of this here would be, I've pulled in JS and CSS and three plugins for it. I've written a little bit of HTML, and now here I've got, uh, if the UL has an LI, make the background red, which we see, the parent of any tag gets this light border, which I'm not sure if you can see on the video. Um, the parent of li nth of type three, so that's this one. So the parent is the ul gets a purple dashed border instead. And then here, I've actually written xpath right in CSS instead of a CSS selector. I've escaped the necessary characters and then all I've said is use that XPath plugin, and we're actually writing CSS rules with XPath selectors. And the JavaScript for this is pretty simple. We're looping through document style sheets. We're going through each of the CSS rules. In this demo, we're only gonna process regular style rules. And then we just test if it has the plugin, extract the information, and write our function call. For an at supports rule, we've got something very similar. So here I've got an input demo and then days of the week. We've got at supports JS element input min characters five. So this is making use of this element query plugin. So it's very similar to this, but instead of being expressed inside of a JavaScript file, this is coming right out of CSS. So here on Saturday and Sunday, this style sheet applies, making the weekend days lime. And on weekdays, which today is a weekday, all of these get a lime background. So that's why the weekdays are lit up today. The code to parse this out again is to loop through the style sheets look through the rules, try to find the at supports rules, recognize if it's JavaScript powered, and if it is, extract the information you need to uh, make that function call for, to JS and CSS. So I've got a version of that that runs uh, server side. I can use Puppeteer, and I can convert a CSS style sheet into the JavaScript that I need and only include the plugins that are used. That's not the right file. So here inside Puppeteer, we load in the CSS style sheet. We loop through the style sheets and the rules. If it is a style rule that has the JS powered thing, we extract the information we need and we're able to write the function call. If it's an at supports rule, and it's JavaScript powered, we can do the same thing for that. Otherwise, we output. And so then at the end, you're left with all of the regular CSS that wasn't JavaScript powered, as well as all of the JavaScript that you need to run the JavaScript powered rules and at rules. And taking this one step even further, if we have something like EQCSS that used a custom syntax, uh, we don't ever need to do that kind of thing again. 
here we have a custom at rule that's not something that CSS can understand. We've got a selector list and we have conditions and then we have a style sheet. And so it doesn't actually take much modification to make that something that we can write in valid CSS and run with the existing plugin. So we can actually, just by importing EQCSS, here we've got a custom at supports rule written for EQCSS, and then the selector list and conditions are the first argument. The only modification that we've had to make here is if we use self, it'll be dropped because that's not valid CSS. So all we've done is we've changed that to an attribute. Now all of a sudden we loop through document style sheets, loop through the rules, look for at support rules. If it has EQCSS in it, we extract the arguments. We write a new at element rule for the arguments, and then we take the CSS text, we remove the beginning part, then, like I said, we replace the attribute selectors that we've created with the EQCSS version of them, and then that can be run through EQCSS process. So now our CSS custom at supports rule written for EQCSS is actually running a JavaScript plugin from CSS. So if I had known this or known how to do this, or if this was possible back in 2014 when we were starting the EQCSS project, we probably would have just used valid CSS that could be read from JavaScript rather than trying to parse our own syntax. So moving forward, whether you're working in CSS or whether you're working in JavaScript or extending CSS with JavaScript, you can do that from CSS, from valid CSS, without having to create a custom syntax. You can keep everything parsable by the browser, which allows you to work client side, as well as uh, in Node with Puppeteer. So you don't need anything like post CSS. You don't need anything that can, uh, you don't need anything more than a browser. And then you can work with it just as you could with JavaScript before. And so this also opens up the possibility of any of these plugins that have already been written uh, already work with this method. So that's kind of what I'm exploring.